So before I move on to some non-woolly scarves, um, I'm just going to go over a few of the different ways that you might purchase wool. So most typical way is in a ball of some type. Now balls come in all different shapes and sizes. You'll find little ones. If you buy from Bendigo Woolen Mills, they sell you these wonderful gigantic balls at really great prices. I get a lot of my wool there. This is another example of their wool. And this is also from Bendigo Woolen Mills. You can buy wool on a cone. They sell this one more for machine knitters, but absolutely you can use them for weaving and they're really good. Now they'll only have the lighter weights of wool on cones. So you won't find a DK weight on a cone. It'll be the lower weights than that. Um, it'll be more like your lace weights and that kind of thing. That's another one on a cone just to show you. And I've shown you this one before, but I wanted to show you again. This one is, both of these are from Geelong Dyeing and they have this really fine, let's get a close up, really fine wool it's a merino wool can you see that <laughs> it's like lighter than a light lace weight and it's a really beautiful smushy wool so you can get wool in really fine weights as well if you can't find them in your region and you'd like to try some lighter weights of wool try knitting machine supplies because they will often have really fine wools like that and they'll come on cones and they're usually pretty reasonably priced and usually they are lovely. I do have a sample to show you this isn't a scarf but it could easily make a really wonderful scarf. So this is a sample I did in Crackle Weave and it was using that really fine merino from Geelong Dyeing and I tried out a variety of patterns and I mixed up the, some of the wefts with the warp and I have to think, I think I wove this around 30 ends per inch. Um, so quite close together because it's such a fine yarn, but it's made this beautiful flowing piece that would make a really great scarf, I think. All right, so now we're getting into some of the non-wool scarves. And I really do love my fancy, what I think of as my fancy yarn scarves because they can be so luxurious. And like I said, I like to sort of wear plain, comfortable clothes, but the perfect way to jazz something like that up is to wear a really pretty scarf and then you look like you are wearing a really nice fancy outfit. So this scarf here, was woven with 62 silk, that's 60 slash two silk. So yes, very, very fine silk. And I actually have the silk here. These are the cones of silk right here. Really beautiful stuff. And this is the sort of scarf that's got to be seen up close to really appreciate it because from back here, maybe it just looks like a pink scarf, pink and purple scarf but up close you have to see the pattern. So what I did for this piece was, you can see I did a purple warp and then I used a combination of this orange and magenta together in the weft and I wove this on my floor loom. Now I think it was about 40 ends per inch and the result was this wonderful, gleaming, beautiful scarf that is just look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. It's just so smushy, so lovely. And the way it catches the light and sort of ripples, it's really one of my favorite things. It's just this really fine silk. I think I need to use it more often, but it does take quite a long time both to warp and weave with such a fine yarn. I did do another scarf on this same warp but it's been gifted but you can see a photo of it here on the screen. So I just love the um, iridescence of this piece and yeah silk is very luxury to be sure. 
it's also very expensive so you definitely want to plan for a luxury scarf if you're going to make the investment in some silk now the next piece I have to show you this was woven with part cotton and part tensile I think that's right this is the piece for the my introduction to floor loom weaving class and it's also a cowl it's what you call a mobius cowl so we'll have a look at what that means so if I hold it up it's got a seam at the back and then it's not it's a circle but it's also can you see it's been twisted down the bottom here so I've put a twist in and then sewn up the ends together and so again this is one that you can wear sort of draped around the shoulders with a belt if you're a belt person or you can double it up to wear around your neck and doing that is kind of nice because you can arrange it however you like and you can also have like both sides of the warp of the piece showing which makes it an interesting piece so this is actually just a three shaft diamond twill and this was I think it was woven at 20 ends per inch um, all 8-2 weight of yarns and makes once again makes a really nice flowing piece now some of you will be familiar with these two let me see if you can guess this is one and this is the other let's have a look up close if you haven't guessed it already this is the Moroccan dream scarf this is the scarf pattern that first appeared in the Ashford the wheel magazine a few years ago and now it's available as a free download pattern when you join up to my mailing list if you haven't done that already I'll link to it down below these two I made both of them in the same yarn bamboo 7 but I use them a little bit differently now bamboo 7 in my country comes on a cone like this just kind of a spool and you can see it's this lovely slightly thick beautiful sheeny bamboo now in Australia you can get this from BB Yarn Supply so it's bbyarn.com and in the US you can get it from Silk City Fibers now as for other countries I'm not sure I have looked because people have asked me but I'm I haven't really found any particular suppliers in other countries so if you use bamboo 7 in your country that I haven't mentioned and you have a supplier can you please comment with that supplier down below so that others can benefit from it this is one of my favorite fibers I like it because it's extremely soft it feels luxury to wear but it has a bit of weight to it as well so it also makes a really good cooler weather scarf now the Moroccan scarf for this one I used green in the warp and burgundy in the weft and it looks different on one side to the other but whichever side you wear it on it looks really great and the bamboo 7 it has a beautiful drape you can see that there it has a beautiful sheen it's easy to look after now with the second Moroccan dream scarf it looks quite different to the first right and you might be wondering what it is that makes it look so different well if you look at my warp you can see I've got blue and green in the warp so that's the difference I used both blue and green in the warp and then I used a purple weft and that's the sort of effect that it gives so they're both really lovely this one's all solid colors this one has two colors maybe even three colors in the warp I'm not sure if I used a couple of different blues because yeah I did actually <laughs> looking at it I can see it's really hard to see but there's um, a slightly darker blue with a slightly lighter blue um, that was purely practical reasons I was running out of blue so I just swapped them around and used them intermittently across the warp turned out really nicely 
Now, if you would like the pattern for this scarf, you can sign up to my mailing list. And there's also a video on my YouTube channel that goes along and shows you how to weave this scarf uh, in addition to the pattern, but you need to grab the pattern first so that you can get all the materials and all the details that you need. Here's another scarf where I've used Bamboo 7. Beautiful, beautiful. See how lovely it is. Just that beautiful drape. So here I've just used three colors. Um, I've used a kind of a bird's eye twill. And I've used a darker weft, so like a, a black weft against these blues and purple. This one would have been done on my table loom, I think. This is a little bit of an older one too. Um, when you've made as many scarves as I have, it gets some of it gets a little bit hazy. But I'm pretty sure I would have done this on my table loom. And I think I probably would have done it at woven it at 20 ends per inch, I'm pretty sure. Now this scarf is really a heavy one and that's because it was a heavy bamboo yarn that I used. Now I've lost the label for this yarn but I'm thinking it's like a Vera Moda or something like that, Moda Vera, something like that. If I can find this online I'm going to put it up on the video but you can see it's quite a thick bamboo it's really nice, soft, sheeny, all the good things like other bamboo. So woven into this twill pattern, it makes a really big scale pattern because it's a much thicker yarn. So this was done on my rigid heddle loom with three heddles. It is the class project for Three Heddle Adventures. I believe it was done on seven and a half dent heddles. I'm pretty sure that's correct. I, I don't think I would have used um, a smaller dent of heddle for this thickness of yarn. It's really quite thick. And yeah, this is a beautiful scarf with the bamboo and I really like the colors that I used in this one too. So it's a, the dark blue for the warp and then this lovely red, this very same red for the weft. That's a really good challenging class if you're interested in that one. And yes, a very heavy and substantial scarf, but very lovely. Sometimes it's nice to have a bolder pattern because often when you're weaving these kind of twill patterns, um, they will be small scale and you need to get up a little bit closer in order to see them. But if you're using a chunkier yarn like I have for this one, then it really, does make the pattern stand out. And yeah, it's reversible, same on both sides. Lovely. Once again, easy care. Bamboo's very easy care for a hand wash. Um, here are two more in Bamboo 7. It's just so lovely. So this one's a green, green warp with a purple weft. And this one is a bluish warp. You can see the blue and a purple weft. And this is the one that I won first prize with when I entered it in the Melbourne show. So it's kind of a special one. It's got sentimental value for that reason. But that's an advancing twill, so a four shaft pattern. This was done on my table loom. I remember that distinctly. And it would have been done woven at 20 ends per inch as well. Advancing twills are really lovely um, for bamboo and sheeny sort of yarns. They just have that flow and they create their own iridescence. I love that. And they're really, really super comfortable to wear. Really nice to wear. So another way that you can get bamboo is on a cone like this. Um, actually, this is the bamboo, this is tensile. They look very similar when they're on the cone. They do feel slightly different and they do look slightly different when you look at them up close. I'd say that Tencel, even though these are both 8-2 weight, the Tencel always seems a little bit thinner. Let's, have, let's see if we can see both of those side by side. A little bit hard to see, but there we go. 
So the white is the bamboo and the magenta is the tensile. Yeah, tensile always seems a little bit thinner. So not all 8-2 yarns are going to be just the same. If you get an 8-2 wool, it's going to behave differently and you might have to adjust the set. So it's always a good idea to do a set test on a yarn that you're not so familiar with or that you may not have used before and make sure that you accommodate it for the particular project that you're doing. So some more bamboo, um, are these two scarves, and these, are, these two are in my Etsy shop. They're sold together as a pair, so you get two scarves for the price of one. This one is called the Cityscape scarf, and this one's called the Aquamarine. They're both bamboo. The Cityscape is a bit heavier. The main reason being that we use clasped weft along with the beautiful twill pattern. And when you use class weft, you're effectively doubling your weft. So that makes this a heavier scarf and thicker. And then I've got the aquamarine, which is another lovely twill. And you weave both of these on the same warp. That's kind of the point. You get two very different scarves out of the one warp. So you put on your black bamboo warp, 8-2 and then you, you weave one scarf and then the other, or you just weave one scarf, depending on what you want to do. So it's fun to kind of have that variation. And again, you can see the, the beautiful bamboo. So these are really my sort of fancy scarves. There's somewhere that I'd wear them somewhere a little bit fancy. Not that I ever really go anywhere fancy, but I'm thinking like, um, I often wear these scarves to church on a Sunday when I'm wearing my Sunday best, or if I go to a party or some sort of gathering, then this is the kind of scarf that I might be wearing. I actually really hate parties. <laughs> I know there's a bunch of you out there going, amen sister, I hate parties too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a socialite at all. And I don't like big gatherings of people and I don't like intense social situations. Okay, now I've got that off my chest, let's get back to the scarves. <laughs> All right, so here's another one of my patterns from my Etsy shop. This one's really fun and very cool. This is the Galaxy scarf. Can you see what's special about it? <laughs> it's got a few things that are special about it. I actually really love this scarf, so let's just have a look how it changes as it goes on. So for this scarf, we use clasped warp and a variety of yarns within the clasped warp to make it another really special kind of a scarf. So I have used some tensile and I've used some bamboo in this one, but I've also used what, the, what you can see is sparkling it's a gold monofilament and this is what it looks like on the on the cone and it's very very fine so this is not the kind of yarn that you would just weave with on its own because it just breaks so easily so you pair it up with other yarns that it can sort of cling to and take some strength from those yarns so in this scarf i didn't have any breakages because it was fine even in the warp to go with other yarns. And it's got this really lovely sparkly effect. These are all 8-2 yarns as well. And this is definitely one of my favorite scarves just because it's so unique. There's one more scarf that I really, really wanted to show you today because it's made of rayon chenille and that is kind of a unique yarn. I really wanted to show it to you so that I could hold it and you know show you and it had silk ribbon in it as well. When we moved, there were a bunch of things that I still haven't found that, you know, they're obviously packed away somewhere. I still have them. I just haven't discovered them yet. I looked for it today. I'll probably find it tomorrow, but I'm gonna put a picture on the screen anyway. So this is the Maria scarf. It was woven with purple rayon chenille for the warp. And I used these beautiful hand-painted silk ribbons as some supplementary warp. And then I wove with the same rayon chenille for the weft. Now, a lot of people are very hesitant about using chenille, especially in the warp. 
but I'm here to tell you it can totally be done. The key ingredient to using it successfully is to tension it as evenly in the warp as possible. It's if you have uneven tensioning, so some of your warp threads are tight while others are quite loose, that's when you're going to get breakages with things like chenille. But if you tension it really carefully so that they are all, you know, at least approximately under the same weight, then you shouldn't have any breakages. Now, this is a yarn that will not pass the breakage test, you know, the snap test. If you pull it, it's going to snap every time. But there are always exceptions to rules and there are ways to get around things. So that even tensioning is the way to do it. And if you're interested in this pattern, it's another one in my Etsy shop. So I've talked a lot about scarves today, but I also wanted to mention some of these same yarns in other items that I've woven. So this one here is Clasp Warp Catch Camille. It's a class at my online weaving store and it uses Tencel, entirely Tencel. And it's got this beautiful, beautiful flow. So it's, it's, a ki it's a kind of poncho, but it's constructed in a particular way to have this lovely flow. Tencel is so light and beautiful to wear. It's really, really nice. Now the yarn that I showed you earlier that was on the cone, this bloom yarn, I also used that, but in a different colorway, to make this slouchy bag. It's quite a few years since I did this. This is also a class and it's a double heddle class. So it's actually a woven tube. Um, if you look at the sides where the seams normally would be, there's just folds, no actual seams. And then I wove the handle separately. So that's, it's meant to be worn kind of like this across the body bag kind of thing. And it's a very unique kind of a bag. So you might not think of using um, a wool and this is like an iron weight wool. You might not think of that for something like a bag, but it can work really well. And this is a really fun way to use a tube as well. Um, because you can, incorporate the warp into the actual bottom of the bag just by leaving some fringe and twisting it up and then you've got this really unique bag and I've just sewn a little sequin embroidery thing on there to make it even more unique. Lastly I just want to share some of my other woolen items that I've done. This is the Midnight Shawl and it's woven with, it's quite a heavy shawl, it's woven with DK weight wool both for warp and weft, and they are in different colors. So you can see the contrast right here. One's a lighter blue and one's a darker blue. And then I did a crocheted edge like that around the outside of the darker wool. This one was woven with two heddles and a DK weight wool. Makes a really nice shawl. And you can do it, you know, with or without the crochet border. That's entirely up to you. So just let me position it properly. Usually I would wear this with um, a little shawl pin. Like you can turn down the collar to make a collar. It's not actually a collar. You can turn it down to make a collar. And then I'd put a little shawl pin here to hold it together. So it's a really lovely one. Also, you know, quite heavy for more for winter. I wanted to show you this one. This is what I call my luxury throw. It's an overshot woolen throw. And I wove this with the Geelong wool that I was talking about earlier. So this really fine one. And uh, I used a bit of Bendigo wool in the weft as well. So the blue is the Geelong wool. And I really wanted to use that because it's so very soft. And I wanted to have this as a really luxury, luxurious feeling piece, which it is. I had a lot of issues with this one, a lot of warp breakages, unfortunately. And I'm sure I could improve that with better tensioning. Um, and so it has turned out really lovely and light, as you can see beautiful. The 
the wool that I used for the weft or for the pattern weft is a fingering weight and yeah it's just it's so beautiful but it was really really difficult to weave and it's in one of my favorite overshot patterns I set this one at about 30 ends per inch and it ended up being a lot of ends just because of the fineness of the wool so and because it is a um a quite a wide piece so I wove this on my floor loom um, four shaft overshot and I think it would make a really glorious scarf because of the it's a, like a fairly large piece but you can just scrunch it up like that that's what I really like in a wool that's just so delicate fine and soft and light and the very last piece I wanted to show you was this blanket this is from my double width e-booklet and it's woven with fingering weight wool and um, 10 dent heddles, two heddles for this one and it was woven double width so the fold is right here running down the middle if you can see if you can't see it great I've done a good job with the fold but um, this is really such a lovely piece and it's like a light nice light lap blanket so it's not really heavy and I really love using fingering weight wool for that reason both for scarves for blankets for all kinds of things because it's warm but it's not really heavy so it's great for those in between times in the transition of seasons or whenever you need it now don't forget that I'm putting a bunch of links down below for you also remember to like and subscribe to my channel and I hope that you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, happy weaving.